why is a psychiatrist talking about sugar? Sugar is addicting, and in my practice, I view it as a drug. When I have patients who've used opiates or used alcohol and they stop, they all wind up eating sugar. Now, why is that? I think sugar is more addicting than alcohol, and I think it's more addicting than opiates, heroin, oxycodone, hydrocodone, fentanyl. And what does it do? Just like alcohol and just like opiates, it releases dopamine, the feel-good neurotransmitter. It also releases some natural endorphins and kephalines, which are natural opiates. So people who stop drinking alcohol and I, I detox them and they stop opiates like heroin or hydrocodone, oxycodone or roxycodone, um, they wind up eating sugar and they use more and more sugar. So sugar is addicting, it causes cravings. That'd be fine, but here are the problems with sugar. Sugar alters your mood, it makes you irritable, it makes you sad, it causes fatigue, it disrupts sleep. It's definitely not good for someone with depression. It makes you more depressed and you use it over time. So I have to educate my patients, like what is sugar? Yeah, everyone knows sugar, domino sugar, you see white sugar, but it's more complicated than that because sugar is virtually in every product in the supermarket if it has a label. Do you know bread has sugar? Do you know all sorts of fruit juices, yogurt, ketchup have fruit juices? Things that say pure cane sugar, brown rice sugar, beet, beet juice, brown rice juice, mixed with apple juice, that's sugar. High fructose corn syrup, that's sugar. Molasses, agave, agave's got more sugar than sugar. All these things, maple syrup, honey, manuka honey, regular honey, all is sugar, it's all bad for you. So salad dressings, all sorts of, virtually every prepared food, food every prepared pastry has bread, ketchup, dressings, sauces, they all have sugar. So it's throughout virtually anything you eat in the American diet, fast food restaurants, all, all, all these things have sugar in them. What is sugar doing? Sugar is responsible for obesity. We all know that. Obesity and sugar may predispose us to cancer, dementia, diabetes, hypertension, coronary artery disease it means your plaques clog up. It may be the number one reason people have coronary artery disease. Sugar can cause stroke. I also, I was just reading a report that a high sugar diet results in decreased blood flow to a wound, a surgical wound or an injury, and narrows and hardens arteries and delays healing. It can be involved in heart attacks. It's definitely connected with cancer. The higher sugar diet, the more cancer. It's definitely related to higher cholesterol, higher triglycerides, insulin resistance, uh, damage to your pancreas, Sugar is definitely involved in our cosmetic appearance. You will age quicker if you ingest sugar. Do you know that sugar destroys the elastin and the collagen in your skin? And, and that the result and effect of that is to have wrinkles and skin that doesn't bounce back when you pinch it. So people who have sugar, it looks like they're smokers. So a high sugar diet ages people. Not to mention it throws off the bacteria that grow in your um, mouth and causing cavities, a high sugar diet results in acne. And now remember, sugar is not just cane sugar, molasses, manuka honey, maple syrup, agave. Yes, those are all sugar, brown rice sugar, beet juice, apple juice, that's all sugar. Fruits, that's just sugar. But remember, bread, rice, potatoes, grains, anything with a grain, has sugar in it. That is broken down your body into sugar. So when I say the word sugar, I mean all sorts of bread, pastries, white flour, anything, oats, that is just sugar. Remember, corn is sugar. You know where they get high fructose corn syrup from? Corn. So corn 
enriched white flour, whole, food, whole grain, rye, it doesn't matter. It all is sugar. So the American diet is just loaded with sugar and it's hidden in virtually every product in the supermarket. And if you look carefully, you will see something that has sugar on that label and they disguise it now. Molasses, agave, brown rice extract, beetroot extract, apple juice. It's, it's sugar and it's just as damaging. Yes, it's less damaging the sugar from fruit, but it is still damaging because we eat whole fruit. It has fiber in it and it's fructose, which goes into your liver and it slowly enters the system as sugar, but it's still sugar. You eat too many apples, you're still getting a lot of sugar, which causes damage. Common sense tells us we can eat a little sugar. You see people eat sugar every day and they don't die. It slowly kills you, but it has to be a rare thing. It cannot be a daily thing. You know, once a week, maybe you could have a little sugar, that's it. But it can't be in all these sugary liquids and juices. As far as I'm concerned, no one should be drinking sugar sodas or, or any juice. They're just pure sugar, they devastate the body. They devastate you cosmetically on the outside, uh, in terms of your skin, in terms of wrinkles, in terms of acne, in terms of losing the elasticity, but also on inside, they destroy your body by raising cholesterol, triglycerides, causing diabetes, obesity, insulin resistance, causing dementia, cancer. It's not a pretty picture. And they're devastating in terms of your mood, your sleep, so I tell my patients, if you have depression or anxiety, you don't need to be eating sugar. And let's just be real. Sugar is addicting. The more you eat, the more you want. And it's a vicious cycle. You have to detox from sugar and stay off it. This is how a psychiatrist gets involved with sugar. And I tell every patient in this office, if I'm treating you for depression, I don't want you on sugar. And I tell them, remember, sugar is white flour, all the hidden sugars that I talked about, and corn. Corn is sugar. So it's, I don't know what you think of corn, but just remember how genetically altered over the past 100 years, we've altered all of our crops, including our fruits. You know, 100 years ago, you had an apple. It wasn't as sweet as a Honeycrisp is today. Honeycrisp today has 19 grams of sugar in apple. It used to have like two or three grams of sugar in it. So we have genetically altered all our wheat, our oats, all our fruits to have more sugar. Makes sense, right? Look how we, dogs have evolved over the past 500 years. You started out with one type of dog. Look how genetic, uh, we've genetically altered all the species and come out with all these different species of dogs. We've done that with wheat. So the wheat we have today, it, does, it looks nothing like the, the wheat of, say, let's say 100 years ago. Just like dogs don't look anything like the original dog, well, wheat doesn't either. Neither does corn, neither do apples, watermelons. We made everything sweeter because that's what's addicting. And go think, the big food companies, do they want to give you something with more sugar that's sweeter so you get addicted and you buy it more? You better believe they do. Thank you. It's Dr. Mark Agresti. There's more on my blog at dragresti.com. And I hope people check out my book on Amazon. Tales from